OT Help Desk YouTube video series. I'm Big J. I'm Little J. And today we're going to talk to you about um, edema. Yeah. And we're going to look at some of the assessments that are used. Uh, the first one uh, would be volumetrics. Love that. Water displacement. Yep. Probably the best. Okay. The second we're going to use do some circumferential measurements, which you can just do with a measuring tape. And then the third one, okay, we're gonna use the ring sizer, or, you know, the basically that takes circumferential measurements of the digits. So, so we're gonna go through and we're going to map that out. We're gonna do it because it is an assessment and we should all know how to do that. So join us, okay, as we move through the process of um, evaluating and assessing edema. All right, so we're back. And one of the things that we want to do is, okay, so we're going to do edema measures because you know what? It's really important in outpatient. And it's one of the things that we look at almost immediately. First, we ask for pain and then we do edema. Okay, so we have three things that we look at when we do edema. Obviously, we can look at a hand and we can determine if there's swelling. And how do we do that? Well, put both hands up here, Joseph. Okay, so we would compare both hands, right and left. Now, what if they're both swollen, right? Okay, well, you know, you'd have to you'd have to kind of maneuver your way around that one. But let's pretend that one hand is more swollen than the other right now. So we have a couple options of how we're gonna do, how we're gonna measure. So right out of the gate, the most important thing that we measure, Joseph, bring your hand up again, is we're gonna measure, okay, in uh, centimeters, okay? We're gonna measure the wrist. And it's easy, you just put it right at the crease, okay? And you bring it around and you measure. So Joseph's wrist right there is 18 centimeters, okay? So once we measure that, that's the first measure that we take. The next measure that we take, oh, well, let's do, let's do both. Nice, Joseph, let's do both and let's compare. So we'll compare the measure of Joseph's right versus his left. And interesting, well, uh, I'd say Joseph is about 17.7. Eh, okay, so a little smaller. Are you right-handed, Joseph? I am. That's logical. Okay, now let's do the next measure, which is going to be the distal, or excuse me, the transverse palmar crease. So we're gonna measure right from here, okay? And we're gonna come across the back Okay, and it sits nicely just behind the MP joints. Okay, and we measure, and there you are, you're at 20.2. Let's measure the other one just because. Okay, and we'll do the same. Come across here. It sits right behind the MPs. You can feel it slide right in there. Okay, and we're at 20.1, 20.2. So not too much of a difference there, which is logical. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do, okay, edema, and we're gonna measure the middle phalanx, uh, I'm sorry, the proximal phalanx, the middle phalanx, and the distal phalanx on each hand. So the way we would do that is we're gonna use, uh, basically this is a ring sizer is what it is, and this is what measures edema. So um, you bring it around like so, okay, and then you take this, okay, and you pull it, and you can see that right now he's about six and it's just about 6.4 for that. Then we move it out and you would logically see this get smaller, right? Okay, so, and this one here is about 5.8 um, is about where it is, okay? And then you would go to the distal phalanx and do the same thing and you can see that it's about 5.2. So you would measure each one of the fingers. Now that takes a little bit of time to do, Okay, and you know, these are okay and they're quick, but I'm gonna show you the easiest way to measure edema in a hand, and that is volumetrics. And what you see down here is a volumeter. Okay, and the volumeter needs to be calibrated initially. And the way you calibrate a volumeter is, is you bring the water up to about where it is there, okay? And we're going to take, and we're going to bring it so that the water overflows, okay? And once it overflows, you wait, Okay, until it's finished coming out. All right, and then once it's done, all right, you now take, now there's two types. You can get, you can get a cylinder, okay, and take the, the, the water, the displaced water into here and then pour it into a cylinder. 
It's a little bit more accurate because you have the meniscus that you can add. That's if you want to be perfectly accurate. Okay, it appears as though we don't have that though. Okay, but this has in five milliliter increments, so I can use this to measure. Okay, so what Joseph's going to do is, there is a plastic bar down in the center there that you can barely see probably. Mm -hmm. Joseph's going to put in between his index and his middle finger and he's gonna go down in, okay? And he's going to just go all the way down until he hits that bar and the bar comes all the way up into the crease of his hand. Okay, okay? before I do that, can you explain the purpose of why you would calibrate it before you do that? Well, because it has to be done the same way every time. Okay, so you're gonna do right and left. So by bringing it up, it's right on the edge right now. And what you'll get is you'll get an accurate measure of displacement. So if you were to do it differently between the right and the left, you could you could actually change that, you know, in terms of the milliliter. So this is right on the edge and it's ready to go. So when you say calibrate it, you just want to make sure that the water is right up to the edge here. Yeah, and, and it sounds like, and what I was told is that's calibration. So this will be accurate if it's done this way. So it looks like you just want the water right up to the edge of yeah. the of the sheet there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it's right on the edge of the sheet. Now we're on a flat surface, okay? So go ahead and stick your hand in there, Joseph. Okay, all the way down in. Perfect. All the way until, all the way. Now let it go for a second. Okay, good. And now we have our reads. So here, I always have an extra towel on hand. Here, Joseph, you can dry your hand off. Now I'm gonna tell you that if you look at this, I'm just gonna turn this, okay? And the reading on this, I'm gonna look and I'm gonna put it down on, a, on the flat surface and read it, okay? So Joseph, for the right hand, okay, is 400 uh, and, all right, Joseph is at 470 on his right hand. So I always tell the patient, remember that, or I write it down. So 475 on the right hand. So now watch, because we talked about calibrating the device and it sounds sarcastic, right? Okay, now watch, because at this point, the device is not calibrated, okay? We need to add some more water and let it run out, okay? Because you'd be surprised how much water you lose on the person's hand okay, and how much drips out into the cup that doesn't come out. So you have to watch, and that's why we call it calibrating it, okay? And that means make sure it's flat on the surface, that it's not rocking. Make sure that you're not moving it, yada, yada. Okay, so we got that. I'm gonna pour this out. Okay. Okay, I'm even gonna go one step further and I'm gonna dry out the center of this, okay? And boom, I'm gonna stick it down again. And we always stick a towel underneath because it could get messy, all right? And Joseph, now you're gonna do your other hand. And you're gonna do it the same way you did that the opposite, okay? Put her down in, okay? Perfect, and he's he's actually in the area where he should be. We'll wait, hold on a second till it empties out all the way, and you're good, you're good. All right, here's a towel, do that, okay? And I'm gonna do the measurement here. And interestingly enough, okay, Joseph, the difference, okay, is probably between his right and his left right now, okay, the difference is about five milliliters. So that's enough to note the difference. Now, why would that be? Uh, because of hand dominance in most cases, and that, you know, we're only going mid shaft of the forearm, but it's interesting to note. So now I know that, right? So now I know what the right is versus the left. So it's not a huge difference. Okay, so when I'm when I'm looking at an affected extremity, I can do a comparison between the right and the left. Now here's the deal. It becomes objective after the first reading, right? Plain and simple. So we know that the next time we go to do it, we're not gonna measure the other extremity at this point. We're gonna measure the extremity that has the issue. And we'll know if the edema is decreased or if it's increased. Thus, that's how we measure edema. Okay, so we've We've completed the process of understanding volumetrics and water displacement and what that means, okay? We then, and, and, and identified a little bit of comparison and contrast between the right and left, you know, extremities when it comes to edema. We then looked at circumferential measurements and kind of broke them down 
in relation, you know, to understanding different diagnosis and how you measure, okay, for that. And then uh, we looked at the, um, the digits and did the ring sizer, um, where it looks at the circumferential measurements of each one of the fingers. Um, did I miss anything on that, Joseph, in terms of what we did today? I think we got it covered. All right. So let's back up for one second and let's talk about um, OT Help Desk. I always like to remind students that, you know, learning a concept is important. We do concepts here when we do these videos, but you want to really consider coming on board and being part of OT Help Desk. We have a wonderful process for how we work through, okay, um, you know, content. Joseph, how is our content set up in the um, in the OT help desk? You want to just tell yeah, me so a little bit about that? It's set up so that you can clinically reason through the content. So we have the foundational information there. So if there's some areas you feel like you need more review in, that's always available to go back and look at it. But the main thing that we focus on at the OT help desk is how you clinically reason through not only a question, but a clinical scenario that will help you not only on an exam you're taking, but of course, when you're practicing as a clinician as well. And the thing, the thing that I like to point out here is, is, is that there's a lot of people who talk about how to guess when it comes to a question. I'm one of those guys, I was brought up around doctors, can't help it, okay? You don't guess. Ultimately, there's an answer. So we teach how to clinically reason. And that part of it is different than trying to memorize or remember mnemonics or, you know, think about, you know, how you can cram a lot of information into your brain. I don't believe in it. Right. So, you know, we really are different in how we approach this process. So if I were you, I'd come join us. Yeah. Um, like and it. what about, wait a second. Yeah, I was gonna say like and subscribe. Like and subscribe and what about the free membership. How do they get a free membership? So if you want to see how you can potentially become the OT Help Desk Student Liaison and earn a free membership to the Gold Guarantee product. That's 300 bucks. That's right. Let us know. Reach out to us and we'll let you know how you can do that. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to us and we look forward to seeing you again in the, the uh, rest of the videos. Bye-bye now.